parler d'un sujet à l'autre. Cinema received a life-giving jolt from defibrillators in 1959. A 1,000 volt electric shock named Jean-Luc Godard. He cut up the first 50 years of cinema like it was paper for his arch and breezy collage of sex, death, and enlightenment. And from the minute Breathless debuted, he didn't just have his finger on the pulse of cinema, he was its beating heart. He rewrote its genetic code to introduce postmodernism in a way that permanently ruptured what film could say and how it could say it. Arthur regarde sans arrêt ses pieds, mais il pense à la bouche de Dill, à ses baisers romantiques. Even now, he chases new forms and inscrutable languages that piss people off and confuse them. Godard is a monster in more ways than one. And he made life impossible for most of his female friends and collaborators. And because of this, and his unwieldy and indescribable work, his reputation has been permanently in flux. While the bedrock of his legend has essentially never been touched, he created an entire continent of cinematic diction. Naturally, people love him, and yet he's had more negative reviews and angry viewers than any other permanent fixture in culture, without ever once compromising his desire to continue to invent and reinvent cinema. With every film, it is possible that no one so loathed has such an impressive and singular track record. The one time he garnered not just poor reviews, but outright rage and infamy from the usually silent wider world was during his less demonstrative 80s period, ironically enough. The old firebrand had gone quiet, comparatively speaking, and decided he wanted to retell the story of the birth of Christ using a contemporary French teen as his Virgin Mary. There were protests in picket lines. Even the Pope weighed in. The Pope told people not to watch a Godard film. As the saying goes, you can't buy publicity like that. Vous allez me faire mal? T'as pas à avoir peur. C'était moi qui étais déjà là à ta naissance. Être vierge, ça devrait être. Être disponible ou libre, pas faire mal. Alors vous me croyez Alors vous me croyez C'est vrai que c'est vrai. Le dira Joseph. Esther. Je peux me rhabiller Il faut qu'il soit de moi. The film is a hilarious target for Christian ire, naturally, as nonsensical as taking umbrage with something like the John Coltrane song Cousin Mary for all they say out loud in opposition to religion. And what religion cannot stand up to the scrutiny of abstraction? Hail Mary is as grammatically confrontational as anything by the Swiss maverick. It's about the idea of the common man being worthy of the consideration afforded by religious art, but also about the fundamental unchanging nature of judgment and doubt. <laughs> Ton cœur 
laisser une clarté chaude et douce, comme un feu rayonnant. Qu'y a-t-il sur la terre ou même au ciel qui vaille la certitude de plaire au regard de celui qu'on aime et qui est votre maître Je me souvenais de ce qu'il avait dit au sujet du péché pendant que nous contemplions les libellions. C'est que si on le considérait de la bonne manière, il n'existait pas. Il disparaissait comme l'enveloppe des libellules quand elles luttent pour leur liberté. Ça me fait peur. A virgin dating a cab driver discovers she is quite impossibly pregnant. Suddenly her very boring life is more exciting than she counted on. Prehistory or today, the choice is given to women to respond to male attention. Their anger, their carnal desire, none of it's changed. The protests worked to strangely prove the point of cinema in the first place. If Godard films a woman naked and says this is the Virgin Mary and people believe it, they have admitted that cinema is itself capable of religious representation, of rapping on the door of the heavens. Godard may never have wanted that, but he did it, because of course he did. Who else was going to? Marie. C'est un grand secret. C'est un grand secret. Mon amour. On ne sait pas le dire. Tellement grand. Que tout est consommé. Et tu m'abandonneras. En tout cas, il faut que je sache. Tu veux savoir quoi La main de Dieu est sur moi et tu ne peux m'en défendre. Qu'est-ce qu'on fait Je dois entrer. C'était pas la peine de venir. C'est pas ton corps. Ce qui me dégoûterait, c'est que tu me crois pas. Pourquoi j'ai pas le droit de vouloir aussi que cet enfant soit de moi Si tu me disais avec qui t'es allé, c'est vrai, je m'en fiche. J'accepte si tu restes avec moi. Si je reste avec toi, si je dors avec toi, si je me réveille avec toi. Words and images still have uncommon power, and Godard knew it. He's been writing an atonal symphony in images and words his whole life, containing somehow the sum total of the cinematic reality, and possibly of life itself. For all its high-minded suggestion, Hail Mary is relatively straightforward, and most lovely to consider when it isn't purposefully abrasive. Godard maintains a troubled relationship to religion, having spent a goodly sum of his life looking for some religious authority to stop him, I think, from martyring himself by being uninterested in normality and acceptance, of being actively hateful and hated. He wanted to pay, I think, but he couldn't. No one had the power to stop him, not even God, it seems, and today he's just as cagey and unflappable as ever. He outlived nearly every one of his peers. Every maverick of the French New Wave, gone. But he'll never die, because he's been stitched into the fabric of cinema now. He brought it back to life. And then he spent the rest of his existence wrestling with what he'd done. The only thing he never knew how to do was stop. Oh Marie, quel drôle de chemin j'ai dû faire pour arriver jusqu'à toi. Qu'est-ce qu'il y a encore Et voilà Tu y crois maintenant Alors à Joseph, il va lui dire papa hum. Comment tu vas faire Plus tard, tu vas lui dire que c'est pas son père. 
c'est la vie. Joseph, je voulais vous parler de la station. Ça va, ça. J'ai calculé. Je peux la rembourser en deux ans. Papa, Joseph, je te remercie, Marie. 